kiddo who loves the outdoors, loves plants, or just wants something different for science this year, guest holobotany may be a great choice for you. Welcome, I'm Trisha and I'm a homeschooling mom to three kiddos. And in our 15 years of homeschooling, we've tried a lot of different curriculum and we've had a tough time finding science that works for us. But Guest Hollow's Botany was one that my middle kiddo absolutely loved. Now, it wasn't our first time using Guest Hollow. I've done chemistry in the kitchen, which I have a video about several years ago. I'll have that link down below. Now, while a literature-based program wasn't a great fit for her, I knew it would be for Ben. So when he asked to study botany a couple of years ago, I hopped on Guest Hollows, grabbed it, and it was so good for him. And now this year we are using Chemistry in the Kitchen again for bed. And so when I saw that CJ over at How to Homeschool High School and Stephanie from Schultz Sweeties was hosting a collaboration about Guest Hollow, I knew that I wanted to join in. So down in the down bar, you will find information on the playlist to check out other guest hollow programs, both high school and elementary, as well as details about a sale that's going on with guest hollow right now. When I do one of these curriculum spotlights, I'm not trying to tell you the program's good or bad or whatever. I just want to share with you what we liked about it and what we didn't like about it. So I'm going to start with that. And then at the end, I will turn the camera down and we will look inside of it so you can see how it's laid out. The program is designed for middle school and high school. I've got some thoughts about that that I will share, but it's I like that there is some flexibility in that with the range. And if you have kid, a couple kiddos in that age range, you could definitely use this together. The program itself is also quite inexpensive. It, it is. $25 for the lesson plans, plus your books and supplies that you'll need. Now, what do I love about the program? First thing I enjoy about it is that it is flexible. If you want to do more books one week and then another week you are traveling and you need less material, just choose fewer books. And it's also flexible with how you arrange it within each week. So if you need to do most of your reading on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you want to do more of your activities, your labs, the videos, that sort of thing, you can absolutely do that. Second pro for me is that there are a variety of activity types. Now, when you get the lesson plans and when you look at the sample ones and when we flip the camera down, you'll see that there is a lot in each week. They do not intend for you to do everything. A lot of moms will be really over, are really overwhelmed when they open it and see all that. Not having read where it says pick and choose. Absolutely pick and choose. But that's what I like with the, with all the variety. There are books of different lengths, of different topics. There are different kinds of lab activities, hands-on activities videos of different types and lengths so you can absolutely make this your own. The variety of activities also means that I don't get bored <laughs> and frankly keeping mom entertained is one of the important parts of homeschooling for us. My third pro is that it is really inexpensive. Now asterisk on that because there are a lot of books so if you are in an area where your library is very limited and you don't have access to interlibrary loans, it's not going to be as inexpensive. But there are ways you can save, and I've got a video about different ways I save on books, so I will leave that. There are, is um, like Libby with your digital books through your library or another library if you get a um, I'll say membership to another one. So there are ways to keep your costs low, even if your library isn't very limited or is limited. Now, on to our cons. While it is listed as 6th to 12th grade, <sighs> I'm going to say that that might not be accurate. And this isn't necessarily a con as much of something to be aware of. 
Ben did this as an eighth grader and he is a strong reader and a fast reader. So I will put that caveat on there. But even then, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable calling it a high school level lab science. But that doesn't mean you can't use it as a high school. One, you could add in more. Two, you could use it as an elective. Three, you could use it as an additional science outside of what your student needs for graduation and possible college entrances. Personally, as a main science, I would consider seventh to 10th grade. A seventh grader is definitely gonna need some adaptation because there's just so much reading. A sixth grader is gonna need a lot of adaptation for your average sixth grader because there, are, again, there's just so much reading. Not specifically about botany, though it does apply to the botany course, but in general, I guess, hello, there are a lot of moving pieces. So for example, for in a week, this is week two, if your kiddo did everything, they would have nine different books, as well as a cooking activity, a classification activity with spices. There are three different printables, three different videos, a couple different websites to check out, plus um, art. So, <laughs> so within a day, even if you've cut those down and pick and choose what can be done in a day, there are still lots of things to be done. So if you have a kiddo who struggles with a transition from one activity to another, guest hollows botany or any of their other programs may be hard for you. However, there are ways to adapt it. So for example, in chemistry, there are elements that you're supposed to learn about each day. So one a day, Ben does all of them on one day. And from being in Chemistry in the Kitchen Facebook group and from talking with other moms, there a lot of pieces can be also overwhelming for parents. So that's not to say that if that overwhelms you that you shouldn't use them, shouldn't even consider it. It is to say that that's something you're going to need to be aware of. That's something you'll notice with at least the science programs is that some of the books are what we would call a children's book. They might be a picture book. They might be a kid's nonfiction book. And you might be like, and I get it. But it's a great opportunity to present to them a focused selection without a lot of fluff about a topic that's an easy to read, quick book for them. There's something to be said, especially when you've got so many things going on and so many books that you read over multiple weeks about that sense of satisfaction of just being able to take the information, absorb it, close it up and be done all in the same day. Before we flip the camera down, two quick things. One, your download links have an expiration. Be sure that you back it up somewhere if you think you're going to use this with the multiple kiddos because I did not, and we had a computer crash, and I didn't realize that it crashed, or that we lost it in the crash. And I didn't have it in the cloud anywhere. So when I went to buy, or when I went to download it for Ben, I had to repurchase it, and the price had gone up. I think it was 25 with Elizabeth, and it was 40 with Ben. So that's a price increase <laughs> that I wasn't planning for. So make sure you save it in the cloud somewhere. The other thing I want to mention is that while this curriculum is secular, the company itself is not. And since I share secular curriculum almost exclusively, I can't even think of any that I haven't shared. That's as a Christian family, we use secular programs. But supporting a company that's not secular is okay for me. I, but I know it's not for everyone. So I do want to mention that. So these are the first couple of pages of their supply list and their book list. They also helpfully include different ways that you might be obtaining each book. Again, I took all of this and put it into a Google Sheet so that I could have it easily referenced for me. They also include a little 
include little notes here about each book. So this is just really, really helpful. And I know that the temptation is to skip printing out some things, but as far as the book list and resource page it, supply lists, I definitely think this is one that's worth printing out. So here's an example of their supply list. They put the week and then everything you, that you might need for all of the activities that they list. But I really appreciate how well this is laid out because again, I am terrible about supplies <laughs> with science projects. So anything that will help me out in this way is a bonus. One thing I don't think I emphasize very well in the rest of the video is that this program does include cooking activities using the different ingredients that they're learning about for the plants. So that's a fun little addition that you don't expect to be in a botany course, but it's. So like this one was a honey walnut shrimp one. And I think that went along with um, honey itself. I think that was the week that they studied bees. So here is how it's actually laid out. Again, you want to cut things. They do not expect you to do all of this. Definitely not in a week. Like you could easily make this curriculum into two years if you wanted to do everything, which is a great another option. If you have a middle schooler who loves plants, this would be a great way to great thing to do over like grade seven and eight if you want to hit it all. At the beginning of each week, they list the main topics that are happening and then the days. But again, this is flexible. This is a suggested layout. Think of it more as the week itself and not things that have to be done all of this in each day. The books that are in the top section are like your spine books. And then in the book section are ones that go along with whatever they're learning about. Then they have experiments, they have printables, and these are ones that will either be part of a printable packet from them or ones that will include the link so you can go print it out somewhere else. Videos, websites, and then the journaling and art section is down at the end. And again, we're adapting things, right? So this one was a book about Milton Hershey and then there was another book about chocolate. We actually did a chocolate unit study from Techie Homeschool Mom, as well as a video about the history of Milton Hershey. So absolutely like adapt it the way you need to. So if you want to do the topic, but not as a book, go find another video or go hit Pinterest and see what you can find. And while the recipes do coordinate with whatever the topics are, so like this recipe was pineapple chicken with sweet and sour sauce and pineapple was the topic, you can certainly move things around if you need to. So that's a little spotlight on Guest Hollow's Botany. If you are interested in learning about their chemistry, click on the video on your screen and I will see you in the next video.